Jaden? Here. Alderman Ligon? Here. Alderman Lockhart? Here. Alderman Fine? Here. Alderman Richardson? Here. Alderman Shire? Here. Mayor Beck? Here. I'd like to welcome everybody here tonight. I know everybody knows the reason we're here. And I might give you the two charges that we have against Chief Parker tonight. One of them is failure to respond to a call at the hospital. And the other one is uh, on the computer, the email, the phonographic pictures. And that's the only two things that we can discuss tonight. This time I'll turn it over to the floor. Thank you members of the uh, Board of Mayor and Alderman. My name is Jason Holman and I will present tonight uh, evidence that uh, substantiates the uh, information contained in the charge letter. But before I do that, um, Chief Parchman's attorney, Mr. Mark Finley, uh, is here with us tonight and he has put together a proposed uh, compromise and settlement uh, offer uh, on this issue and I'm going to let him come forward and, and explain that offer to you um, and should the board decide that they want to act on that prior to proceeding with the termination hearing uh, obviously the board is free to do that uh, and, and if not and the board requests that we move forward with the termination proceeding then I'm prepared to, uh, to present evidence and move forward with the termination proceeding. So, at this time, I'll turn it over to Mr. Finley and let him give some information to that. Good evening, everybody. I'm Mark Finley of Boston. And uh, what I'd like to, I don't think I may have enough for everyone, but. <clears throat> this to uh, Mr. Holloway's office on the 21st of February by fax. And I have a fax transmission here, but Mr. Holloway never got to Mr. Holloway's hands. And I'll give you a minute to everybody take a look at it. On the first letter, the first letter is the letter to the Tennessee Retirement, uh, Solid Retirement System where we're asking them to do some computations for us. And then if you look further, you'll see a letter from me to Mr. Holloman. Everybody can see that, where I'm thanking him for his letter of February the 16th. Um, you'll just take a moment and read that over. What I'm asking is, um, first, for this meeting <coughs> on whether or not the chief should be terminated, not to be held tonight because it was so such quick notice. And after I present my proposal to you, I'm going to renew that request to the whole board. Because as you read through the, this packet, you'll see that I asked uh, Mr. Holloman to produce certain witnesses for, this, for you to hear from, particularly as it relates to the incident at the hospital, um, that I think that you would have found extremely helpful and almost necessary for you to make a reasonable decision about that question. And those witnesses include the uh, emergency medical service personnel, uh, Mark Moore, one of the here in city of England police officers who did go to the hospital that evening. And then the jailer who uh, actually accepted this patient to the jail and turned him back because the jail didn't have facilities to help this patient. So we think that if, if you, at the conclusion of this, if you want to have a hearing on the substantive, that substantive issue, you should hear from these witnesses. Now, as you notice in my letter to Mr. Holloman, I set out in the second paragraph a question or questions about the substantive nature concerning the email and stuff, which we'll get back to later. And then if you flip one more page, see the witness list, and then finally you see the, the proposed offer of compromise. And I'll outline that for you and explain to you what the chief is willing to do. Um, you know, the chief has served this city for some 23 years, and I don't know how well you are familiar with 
his service, but I understand his service over those 23 years to be exceptional. I'm seeing some of you reading over the material. I'll give you a moment to do that. <coughs> Everybody ready for me to do Mr. Beach, you know, I think in order for uh, you to make a reasonable decision about what the Chief and I are proposing to you, um, it might be helpful for you to understand a little bit about our position, and that is, so you'll understand it, my position that the Chief is being accused of wrongdoing, his job is being to be taken away from him on that basis. And that by virtue of this being a cause proceeding that, that he has an interest in the outcome of this that, that could be taken up to the court. As opposed to most of us we work at will and we can be fired for no reason. So I respectfully submit that since this is a four cause proceeding that there needs to be a valid reason to let the chief go. And of course I remind you perhaps not not necessarily how long he has served the city when you consider that proposal. Um, and of course, he and I both recognize that in order for him to be an effective chief of police, he needs the mayor's support. Um, and it doesn't appear that he has the mayor's support. So having said all those things, 
this is the proposal. The chief will be eligible to retire in May of next year as, as 62 years of age. Um, he has 289 days of sick pay built up, which is quite commendable, I would suspect, you would think. It tells you a little bit about his work ethic. I understand that the first 90 days of sick pay is not, may not be counted by the state towards retirement, which roughly leave, leaves him 199 days of sick pay that can be counted towards retirement, which means essentially that if the chief were able to hold his position until the end of July, he would be eligible to retire at age 62 as if he were age 62. He's at his, he'll be 62 in May of next year. Um, now, this, what I've just explained, is my best understanding of the law, and that's why I've written the Tennessee Consolidated Retirement System, that letter that you saw, asking them to do that for me. Um, so the first component of our proposal <coughs> is to allow the chief, until the date that he's eligible for retirement, to stay on administrative leave with pay so it'll count um, so that he may retire. So that's the first component of our request. Um, the second component of our request is that I understand that everybody who has served with the city is given a, lo a longevity pay uh, in July and in light of his service to the community over the years we thought that perhaps you would think that that would be a, uh, an appropriate uh, under these conditions. And lastly, he's asked, due to his uh, health conditions, diabetes and otherwise, that he remain uh, insured. We understand, by the city, we understand that that has happened in the past when employees retire early until that he reaches age 65 when uh, his the Social Security Medicaid uh, or Medicare uh, would kick in. Um, so that's our proposal. And do any of you have any questions of me about that proposal? How many actual days are you talking about that would be the city's expense? Here's what I think. Here's what I think. 189 days, 199 days, or are they subtracted from the total that he comes 62? Because you can retire. I know for a fact that I just did that your, your sick leave is counted towards your experience. Was it you, Ms. Bushati, that explained that to Mr. Holloman earlier? Yes. She, she, it's was, part of our personal policy it's after the 90 days. So after 90 days, would he, would he get paid for that 90 days? It really is if you were ill. Okay. That so he wouldn't get paid the sick pay, right? If he were ill and he were on the payroll, then he would get paid. But he's not ill, so he won't get paid for that. But the way I understand, have to do it. the way I understand it is, is he gets 20 days for every. I'm sorry, for every 20 days of sick pay, he gets a month. Okay, so I did that computation. I took 90 away from the 289, and I got 199. I divided by 20, and I got, and I wrote it down. Mr. Holloman and I did it, and um, about 10 months. And I got, yeah, 10 months, potentially, which we needed to get to the end of July of this year in order for those 10 months to kick in and take him to right past his birthday in May of, of 08. So I'm, I'm correct to assume that with your proposal, <clears throat> the city would pay him 10 months south. I'm thinking, Mr. Price, that they would pay him to the end of July, and that's all. That's what I'm of thinking. Of this year. Of this year. But I really, that's one of the reasons I didn't want to have a big hearing tonight, was because I wanted to hear from Tennessee Consolidated Retirement to be sure that whatever we did suited, for, suited them. Right, I understand that. You just have to walk the material up there and say, this is where I am, what I should do. And, and I sent that up there on the 21st and uh, last week, and uh, I thought we were going to have kind of a discussion meeting tonight about this, not really a decision meeting. And of course, Mr. Mr. Holloman didn't receive my material, even though my machine says it talked to his machine. 
what happened from his machine to his desk. Maybe there wasn't any paper in it. Who knows? Any other? Does that answer your question? Well, it's for the position where I'm going, it's going to be hard for us to make decisions. It seems like we don't have a whole lot of facts about anything right now. I agree. Just, what's dollars and cents? And from what you're saying and what my own knowledge of dealing with, it's the only way we're going to find that out. Is for Mr. Parchman to gather what he has, his five year high average, and take it to the Tennessee Consolidated System. They can figure it and they can get him on the spot. I wish you'd let him do that. Nothing but us report back to you. I mean, after all, the chief served here a long, long time. I understand. But that's the only way we're going to know he'll have his dollars and cents. He'll know everything right down to dates and everything. And that's about the only way you're going to have the information that you need. Uh, Mr. Holland and I were talking about that today. Uh, he and I both said, you know, in this day and age, we've all come to rely on that, and we mail it also typically. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's just not your standard operating procedure to call up and say, did you get a fax? Because you send so many. And I said, I'm going to change my standard operating procedure from now on. We fax somebody and call up and say, did y'all get that? But you shouldn't have to do that. Well, let me be clear to the board, though. I Mr. Friendly did not mail this. He faxes and he shows me that he had sent it by fax, but I did not receive it in the mail. And I called Mr. Friendly today at his office and did not receive return phone calls. And I have not heard from Mr. Friendly since we met on the 13th by telephone. I just want to be sure that the board is clear on that. And I actually got a message that I thought Mr. Holland was going to drop by my office on the way down here. Here's my, uh, believe it or not. <laughs> uh, I didn't leave that message, so <laughs> Here's the, uh, uh, transmission where you can see where it says the destination number, four pages, results okay. okay. And that's the copy of the front page. But again, these kind of things happen in real life. And that's why I respectfully suggest that to take a man of 23 years service in the community and before that as a deputy sheriff and make some hasty decision. To, uh, to dismiss or not to dismiss, and, and should the board decide to dismiss, uh, 
Mr. Finley's client will have the opportunity, obviously, to appeal that decision. I'm not saying that information's not there. I'm just saying I haven't seen it. Sure, no, That's I understand. the point I'm making. I can't speak to the opinions of other boards, but I thoroughly agree with Parkman. I don't think it's fair to this board to come in here with absolutely no information whatsoever. People in town are calling us liars, but we have no information. And sit here, you still don't have any information, and make decisions in five minutes' time. Sure, I don't know how to get it. He's not had the opportunity to explain it to us. I don't think it's fair to them, Paul Lee, and it's sure not fair to us. And I, and I, I just want to be clear to you, Mr. Weissman, I'm not suggesting that this board make any decision. I, I, know, I can pretty much tell where you're coming from. Sure. So I'm not in opposition to what the mayor has recommended. And I want to see the evidence before I make a decision. I want to know how much dollars and cents it's going to cost for us to settle it. And we need to get on with settling. It's gone long enough. We're killing the community. We're killing the community. Whatever you may have to say in opinion to what they've asked, I'd like to hear that. But if we're going to proceed, I agree with them. I want to hear the witnesses on this hospital. There was a whole lot of rumors and controversy. I don't know what to do. It's the decision of the board that they want to move forward with my presentation of evidence on the charges in the charge letter. I'll be happy to do that at this time. It's up to the mayor. He's made a recommendation whatever he wants to do. Okay. Well, this year, then we'll go back. Okay. Well, let, let me begin with that then this evening. And I, I would like to, to call to the board's attention, um, and I said to you, Mr. Vice Mayor, since you raised it, um, the witness that the city has uh, is the woman who made the call from the hospital. I, in the information that I'm about to provide to you momentarily, you'll see a letter that she wrote to the city explaining her view of how that transpired. Um, she is unfortunately not able to be here this evening because she's had a death in the family. Um, so I can't offer that testimony to you. What I can offer to you is, is her letter. Uh, and obviously Mr. Finley is free to put on any witnesses that he would like to put on that may offer a, a similar or different version of that story. Uh, now, I know that Mr. Finley told you that in his letter that he said he sent to my office on the 21st, uh, he asked me to subpoena witnesses. I, I just want to be sure that the board is clear. Um, it's simply not my obligation to bring his witnesses here tonight. It's his obligation to bring his witnesses here tonight. Um, and, and while I, I feel for him that he, uh, he says he sent this letter, and I believe that he sent it at the Senate, um, but I did not receive it, and, and, and frankly, I'm not obligated uh, to present his witnesses for him. Uh, that's, that's simply his responsibility. But what I can offer to you is the testimony of the woman that made the call in the form of the letter that she sent to the city following up on that evening. Let me understand, if I may, what it is we're doing. We're basically getting enough information to decide whether to postpone. I don't have any information at all. Is that what to I'm going to make any kind of decision? Nobody we don't have any of the information. I understand that. I just don't want to. I just want to know if we're if we're moving into a termination trial. I'd like to know that, and I'd like to be heard before we do that. If we're just if we're just giving the board enough information so that they can decide whether what to do tonight about my settlement proposal, then I'll be quiet. I'm here this evening to facilitate whatever the will of this body is. If this, if this body wants to move forward with termination proceedings, I'm prepared to put that information into the record for you to consider to, to determine whether or not you will or will not affirm the mayor's decision. Uh, or if this body wants to entertain further discussion regarding settlement, I'm happy to facilitate that. I just need to understand what the will of the body is, and I, and I can proceed accordingly. Well, I personally would like to know what the settlement is. And that's not here in dollars and cents, and I'm sure the mayor would also. We don't know what the settlement is. So that's pretty much up to him. <coughs> <coughs> I, this is just my feeling on it, and 
I recused myself uh, from representing uh, the city regarding this issue with Mr. <coughs> Parchman. But uh, my feeling is that if we're going to, if the board is going to hear this, need to hear it all at one time as opposed to piecemealing it, doing part of it now, part of it later. If we're going to pass on the issue now, uh, as far as not making a decision on it, resetting it for another time, then I suggest you hear it all at one time as opposed to doing it part of it tonight, hearing part of the information tonight. <laughs> I think the issue that we have is that, that Mr. Finley is not prepared to provide any of the financial information. If this board decides to, to terminate, uh, obviously the, the financial information that Mr. Finley is referring to frankly becomes irrelevant. Uh, I don't have that information. Uh, Mr. Finley uh, has asked to be able to provide that. Uh, as a settlement proposal in, all, in the alternative of this board moving forward with termination procedure. I don't believe, and I, I won't speak for Mr. Finley, but I don't believe he's prepared to do that this evening. And again, if you want to hear that the information regarding the proposal before you <coughs> make a decision on termination, uh, again, I would suggest you do it all at one time, and that way you don't have to rely on your recollection of what took place here tonight. You don't have to go over that, that same testimony once. That's just my argument my opinion. I, 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 I certainly don't disagree with that. I, 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 I see the value in this board, uh, should this board uh, decide that it, it wants to weigh both the possibility of termination and the possibility of, uh, of some alternative settlement. I don't see the downside to, uh, to the board having more information regarding the financial impacts. So you see where we're coming from. I don't have right that information. No, uh, it's ready for anyone. We just don't have it. Sure, I understand. Whatever the mayor wants to do. Um, well, does anybody want to make a motion? Put that in effect. I hate to talk about it. Do you need a firm dollar impact on that figure? Or yeah, just give us <laughs> what it would cost. It's gone on long enough. I'd like to see the meeting range where both attorneys could be here, and I know how it is with attorneys. Well, that would be a problem. But we're just beating our head against the wall here with no information, and we're dragging and dragging and dragging. Here we are dragging again. Uh, I'm going to hear it when I have all the information. I want to know what the settlement is. I want to know how much dollars and cents it may be cheaper to make the settlement than it is to cash the coal. And I would expect your recommendation. So I'll make the motion that be postponed for up and which time. Everybody has got everything together, and we have information prior to the time of the meeting where we can come in and make a decision. That's not what I want to do, but it seems, appears to be the only option. So that's the motion. Motion been made, sir. Aye. Are you making the motion for an informational meeting for the board? No, the but there's attorney, nothing to prevent or? that. Okay. What, the what? actual determination will be made in conjunction with the agreement with two of the attorneys and the mayor, and everybody has everything ready to go, and let's get to do it. Now, if the mayor won't have an informational meeting prior to that, uh, that's up to his attorney board. There's nothing that I know of says you can't. Well, couldn't we have it ready to meet? I got to give enough time. I don't have an objection to that as long as we have the paperwork right. to read before the meeting. Uh -huh. I'd like to see all that before the meeting. Well, that's so we're prepared. Yeah. Yeah, that's up to you. First Tuesday. I made a motion. There's been a motion made, second. Second yes, yes, roll call motion. Alderman Beecham? Yes. Alderman Dunn? Yes. Alderman Pinkham? Yes. Alderman Lincoln? Yes. Alderman Lockhart? Yes. Alderman Richardson? Yes. Alderman Shires? Yes. Motion passed. If I can just clarify with the board, I, I want to be sure that I understand. Uh, this will be passed to the next regular meeting, and in the meantime, I, I'm prepared this evening and will certainly be prepared in the future to present the evidence that substantiates what's in the charge letter. Uh, 
Um, and what you're looking for is, is as a potential alternative to that is whatever information Mr. Finley can provide on behalf of his client as to what the financial impact would be to having him continue on a paid suspension until such time as his sick leave can kick in and, and finish out his term until the time. My question is, I need information that you have on the charges so that I can decide whether he needs to be terminated or whether we need to take the secondary debt and, and that's what I just want to be be clear to this board is, is to the extent that I have information um, that, that substantiates the charge letter, that, that really needs to be presented in a format that allows Mr. Finley the opportunity to cross-examine that information at the, at the time that it's presented. That's simply the only reason that it hasn't been provided to you in advance of the meeting is that, is that Mr. Parchman has some due process rights here and, and needs to be able to, to confront whatever evidence is presented. So that's why I, I have it here tonight to present in a, in a, in a public format. why you'd all want to see it in advance, but I do think I agree with Mr. Holliman that the proper way of doing this is to sit down, put the evidence before you, hear both sides and make a decision. Mm -hmm. Rather than, if you see part of the case in advance, you're going to have a tendency to, to think certain things that may or may not be the case if you had both sides. And one point of order, is it Mr. Bruschetti where I can get a subpoena for the witnesses that we need? Is that how we can get a subpoena? Because I assume that that's why I said it to Mr. Holloman. I thought he would communicate it to, to the city and the city would issue the subpoena. Well, we can, we can discuss that. I have the letters here and I can point you to city court to issue the subpoena. Is that correct? If we're going to have a meeting next regular schedule, and I would like to have those witnesses subpoenaed. And I'm, I'm, fine to, I'm fine to do subpoenas if the uh, mayor or, or you may know. Um, if if we're going to need that in order to get this with you, we may be able to reach agreement to have this picture here. We might not need it. We can discuss it. Right. But they decide. We'll make announcements for separate departments in here this evening. Everybody's been hearing about the Wolf Creek Down potential up in Kentucky and how it would affect and impact, and impact Houston County. We have a public meeting next Monday night at 7 o'clock. Maybe it's courthouse or over here. Right now I'm planning to right here. This information up concerning the impact on Houston County next Monday night. Thank you. Thank what time is that meeting? What time? Seven. I'm oh, sorry. We need to hear that. What was that? Motion to adjourn. <laughs> Thank you.